जय राध माधवा कुंज विहारे जय गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी यशोदनंदन व्रजजन रंजना यशोदनंदन व्रजजन रंजना यमुना तीरावन चारी यमुना तीरावन चारी जय राध माधवा कुंज विहारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी यशोदनंदन व्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरावन चारी यमुना तीरावन चारी जय राध माधवा कुंज विहारी जय राध माधवा कुंज विहारी जय राधा गोपीनाथ राधा गोपीनाथ राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय राधे जय श्री राधे जय गौरनीता जय गौरनीता गौरनीता जय गौरनीता जय जय प्रभु पा प्रभु पा प्रभु पा प्रभु चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत कथा दर्शि वसति गौरव वृंद की जय 
ग्रंथ राज श्रीमद भागवतम की जय श्री श्री राधा गोपीनाथ की जय श्री श्री गौर निताय की जय हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की जय जगत गुरु शील प्रभुपाद की जय निताय गोर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय reading from shrimad bhagavatam canto 1 chapter 3 krishna is the source of all incarnations text number 28 ye te cha hamsha kalaha pumsaha ye te cha hamsha kalaha pumsaha krishna to bhagavan swayam कृष्णस्तु भगवान् स्वयं इंद्र हरि व्याकुलम लोकम इंद्रारि व्याकुलम लोकम मृडयन्ति युगे युगे मृडयन्ति युगे युगे येते चाम सकलाह पुंसह कृष्णस्तु भगवान् स्वयं इंद्रारि व्याकुलम लोकम मृडयन्ति युगे युगे येते चाम सकलाह पुंसह कृष्णस्तु भगवान् स्वयं इंद्रारि व्याकुलम लोकम मृडयन्ति युगे युगे ye te all these cha and amsha plenary portions kalaha portions of the plenary portions pumsaha of the supreme of the supreme krishnaha lord krishna to but bhagavan the personality of godhead swayam in person indra hari the enemies of indra vyakulam disturbed lokam all the planets mridayanti gives protection yuge yuge in different ages <coughs> translation and purport by divine grace shila prabhupad all of the above mentioned incarnations are either replen or either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the lord but lord shri krishna is the original personality of godhead all of them appear on planets whenever there is a disturbance caused by the atheists the lord incarnates to protect the theists kindly repeat all of the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the lord but lord shri krishna is the original personality of godhead all of them appear on planets whenever there is a disturbance 
caused by the atheists. The Lord incarnates to protect the theists. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In this particular stanza, Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, is distinguished from other incarnations. He is counted amongst the avatara's incarnations because out of his causeless mercy, the Lord descends from his transcendental abode. Avatara means one who descends. All the incarnations of the Lord, including the Lord himself, descend on the different planets of the material world as also in different species of life to fulfill particular missions. Sometimes he comes himself and sometimes his different plenary portions or parts of the plenary portions or his differentiated portions directly or indirectly empowered by him descend on this material world to execute certain specific functions. Originally, the Lord is full of all opulences, all prowess, all fames, all beauties, all knowledge and all renunciations. When they are partly manifested through the plenary portions or parts of the plenary portions, it should be noted that certain manifestations of his different powers are required for those particular functions. When in the room, small electric bulbs are displayed, it does not mean that the electric powerhouse is limited by the small bulbs. The same powerhouse can supply power to operate large-scale industrial dynamos with greater volts. Similarly, the incarnations of the Lord display limited powers because so much power is needed at that particular time. For example, Lord Parashurama and Lord Narasimha displayed unusual opulence by killing the disobedient Kshatriyas 21 times and killing the greatly powerful atheist Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu was so powerful that even the demigods in other planets would tremble simply by the unfavorable raising of his eyebrow. The demigods in the higher level of material existence many, many times excel the well-to-do, the most well-to-do human beings in duration of life, beauty, wealth, paraphernalia, and in all other respects. Still, they were afraid of Hiranyakashipu. Thus, we can imagine, thus we can simply imagine how powerful Hiranyakashipu was in this material world. But even Hiranyakashipu was cut into small pieces by the nails of Lord Nirsimha. This means that anyone material powerful cannot stand the strength of the Lord's nails. Similarly, Jamadagnya displayed the Lord's power to kill the, all the disobedient kings powerfully situated in their respective states. The Lord's empowered incarnation Narada and plenary incarnation Varaha, as well as indirectly empowered Lord Buddha, created faith in the mass of the people. The incarnations of Rama and Dhanvantari displayed his fame, and Balarama, Mohini, and Vamana exhibited his beauty. Dattatreya, Matsya, Kumara, and Kapila exhibited his transcendental knowledge. Nara and Narayana Rishis exhibited his renunciation. So all the different incarnations of the Lord indirectly or directly manifested different features. But Lord Krishna, the primeval Lord, exhibited the complete features of Godhead. And thus it is confirmed that he is the source of all other incarnations. And the most extraordinary feature exhibited by Lord Sri Krishna was his internal energetic manifestation of his pastimes with the cowherd girls. His pastimes with the gopis are all displays of transcendental existence, bliss and knowledge, although these are manifested apparently as sex love. The specific attraction of his pastimes with the gopis should never be misunderstood. The Bhagavatam relates these transcendental pastimes in the 10th canto. And in order to reach the position to understand the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna's pastimes with the gopis, the Bhagavatam promotes the student gradually in nine other cantos. According to Srila Jeeva Goswami's statement, in accordance with authoritative sources, Lord Krishna is the source of all other incarnations. It is not that Lord Krishna has any source of incarnation. All the symptoms of the Supreme Truth in full are present in the person of Lord Sri Krishna. And in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord emphatically declares that there is no truth greater than or equal to Himself. In this stanza, the word Swayam is particularly mentioned to confirm that Lord Krishna has no other source than Himself. Although in other places the incarnations are described as Bhagavan because of their specific functions, nowhere are they declared to be the Supreme Personality. In this stanza, the word Swayam signifies the supremacy as the Samambonam. The Samambonam Krishna is one without a second. 
He himself has expanded himself in various parts, portions and particles as Swayam Rupa, Swayam Prakasha, Tadekatma, Prabhava, Vaibhava, Vilasa, Avatara, Avesha and Jeevas. All provided with innumerable energies just suitable to their respective persons and personalities. Learned scholars in transcendental subjects have carefully analyzed the Samam Bonam Lord Samam Bonam Krishna to have 64 principal attributes. All the expansions or categories of the Lord possess only some percentages of these attributes. But Sri Krishna is the possessor of the attributes sent person. And his personal expansions, such as Swayam Prakasha, Tadekatma, up to the categories of the avatars, who are all Vishnu Tattva, possess, possess up to 93% of these transcendental attributes. Lord Shiva, who is neither Avatara nor Avesha nor in between them, possesses almost 84% of the attributes. But the Jivas, or the individual living beings in different statuses of life, possess up to the limit of 78% of the attributes. In the conditioned state of material existence, the living being possesses these attributes in minute, very minute quantity, varying in terms of the pious life of the living being. The most perfect, be, uh, perfect of living beings is Brahma, the supreme administrator of one universe. He possesses 78% of the attributes in full. All other demigods have the same attributes in less quantity, whereas human beings possess the attributes in very minute quantity. The standard of perfection for a human being is to develop the attributes up to 78% in full. The living being can never possess attributes like Shiva, Vishnu or Lord Krishna. A living being can become godly by developing the 78% transcendental attributes in full, but, can, but he can never become a god like Shiva, Vishnu or Krishna. He can become a Brahma in due course. The godly living beings who are all residents of the planets in the spiritual sky are eternal associates of God in different spiritual planets called Haridhama and Maheshadhama. The abode of Lord Krishna above all spiritual planets is called Krishna Loka or Goloka Vrindavana and the perfected living being by developing 78% of the above attributes in fullness can enter the planet of Krishna Loka after leaving the present material body. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport. Om Ajjana Timirandhasya Jnanan Jana Chalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pachate Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Ginim Yat Kripata Mahamande Shri Gurum Dinataranam <coughs> So today's verse is one of the famous verses of the Bhagavatam which is actually uh, the one of the most important verses of the uh, entire Vedic scriptures. In the previous verse yesterday we have seen how all the various portions and uh, plenary portions of the Supreme Lord have been described to be uh, emanating from Hari. And when we say Hari, actually it refers to Lord Krishna which is clarified unequivocally in today's verse. In today's verse it is said that Krishna is Bhagavan Swayam. Although Lord Ramachandra is also Bhagavan, Vishnu is also Bhagavan, Varahadeva also Bhagavan, Narsimhadeva also Bhagavan, all the incarnations of the Supreme Lord are called Bhagavan. But then when it is mentioned that Krishna is Bhagavan Swayam, First it says, Ete Chamsa Kalaha Pumsaha. All the personalities previously described are expansions or plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the Supreme Lord. But, Tu, Tu means here, but. But means it is differentiating. It is uh, clearly demarcating the difference between one category and another category. One category is all the expansions, plenary portions and portions of the plenary portions. Then another category, 
ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ತು ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎಡ್ ಅನದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಈಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ he is swayam he is independent he is not dependent upon anyone else whereas all the other personalities like vishnu or <coughs> varaha dev narsimha dev whether it is narayana himself all of them are not swayam bhagavan they are not swayam they are not independent they all have a source so therefore when the bhagavatam is saying krishna stu bhagavan swayam that swayam word assumes great significance he is swayam he is himself he is not dependent upon anybody else he is dependent only upon himself for his existence whereas all other personalities their existence is dependent upon krishna the supreme lord generally people think that narayana is the supreme lord he generally the, it is misunderstood that when it is said that krishna is an avatara krishna incarnates like all other avataras he emanates from narayana because narayana never comes into this material world narayana is always in vaikuntha whereas krishna comes to this material world so therefore narayana is in a superior position because he is always in the spiritual abode only his incarnations come into this world so generally people misunderstand that narayana is the source of krishna's avatara but then bhagavatam is saying krishna stu swayam when krishna incarnates he does not depend upon upon anyone else he personally himself comes whereas all other avataras whether it is varaha dev kurma dev etc they all come through the narayana within this material world uh, the, the expansion of narayana lord vishnu within this material world when krishna comes he comes on his own that is why krishna says in the bhagavad gita gita also sambhavami atma mayaya i come by my own sweet will and energy he is not dependent upon anybody else to incarnate but then when we look at the two personalities krishna and narayana what happens is when the supreme personality of god by definition bhagavan means one who possesses all the six opulences all the shada ishwarya he has to be shada ishwarya purna then only he is bhagavan when we look at the six aishwaryas of virya and uh, shriya and uh, bala etc which is as prabhupada is explaining in the purport aishwarya se samagrasya virya se yashasya striyo ho jnana vairagya yascha shannam bhagamiti ingana these are the six opulences that the supreme lord has to possess samvir prabhupada has explained in the purport <clears throat> anyway so basically the lord is uh, full of beauty he is full of yeah here it is originally the lord is full of all opulences all prowess all fames all beauties all knowledge and renunciations these are the six opulences and when we look at it from that perspective narayana seems to be excelling in all the opulences the kind of opulence narayana describe narayana displays in vaikuntha cannot be matched by anyone lakshmi devi swayam is always waiting to serve the lotus feet of narayana that lakshmi who is aspired whose mercy whose kripa is aspired for even great personalities like brahma and lord shiva and other all other devatas she is personally serving the lotus feet of narayana so the opulence of vaikuntha loka is indescribable and narayana appears with four arms decorated with the conch the lotus flower the club and the disc the sudarshana chakra the kaumodaki the gada and the shankha and the padma so that adds to his opulence normally we see personalities human beings are all two handed 
Narayana, when he appears with four arms, you immediately understand this is not an ordinary person. Just like when Krishna appeared on this planet, he appeared to Vasudeva and Devaki in his four-handed form. The moment Vasudeva and Devaki saw Krishna's four-handed form, they did not think, oh, Krishna is our child. No. They started offering obeisances and prayers. Oh, you are the Supreme Lord. You are the, you are, you are the creator of the whole world. You are the controller of the three modes of material nature, etc., etc., etc. So when, when you see a four-handed form, naturally, the reverence comes out in your heart. So, opulence-wise, when you look at Narayana, he is really, he displays magnificent opulence. Whereas you look at Lord Krishna, two-handed, just like a human being, like you and, uh, you and me. So he appears very normal. Not only that, what is uh, Krishna doing? He is playing with his friends in, in the forest. And sometimes the friends, what they will do, do, they will tell Krishna, Krishna, today my mother has sent one special sweet for you. Please close your eyes and open your mouth. And Krishna will close his eyes and say, ah. And the boys, what they will do, they will pluck one flower and put it into Krishna's mouth. And Krishna will, ah, hey, what is this? And then the friends will all start clapping, ah, I made a fool of Krishna, I made a fool of Krishna. So you look at Krishna, <laughs> you cannot do that to Narayana. <laughs> Nobody can even dream of doing that to Narayana. But look at Krishna, just like an ordinary human being is playing. So how do we understand? So that the Acharyas have, have analyzed how the Supreme Lord, if we look at, the, when you look at the gradations, the principle, the primary qualities, if you look at a personality like Lord Brahma, who is the creator of this universe, who is the head of all the devatas. He is the father of all the living entities within this universe. He possesses 50 qualities in full. Now, Lord Shiva is on a higher pedestal than Lord Brahma. He possesses 55 qualities. Lord Narayana has been analyzed by the Acharyas by Srila Rupa Goswami, it is described in his Bhakti Rasamrata Sindhu that Lord Narayana possesses 60 qualities. He has five qualities which is not possessed even by Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva possesses five qualities extra, more than what Lord Brahma possesses. And all living entities within this universe, they can possess only up to those 50 qualities which Brahma possesses. They cannot possess the five extra qualities that Lord Shiva has. Nor can they possess those extra five qualities which Lord Narayana possesses. Now when it comes to Krishna, Krishna possesses four qualities which is not there even in Lord Narayana. So, when we look at it from the opulence perspective, in the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Uddhava, while describing to Vidura about the uh, transcendental qualities of Krishna. Because Vidura, when he met Uddhava, Uddhava is from Dwaraka. He is, a, he is one of the Yadava associates of Krishna, very close associate of Krishna. In fact, Krishna appointed Uddhava as his personal advisor. Any issue would be there, Krishna would consult Uddhava. And Uddhava would be very glad because he knew, Uddhava knew that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He does not need anybody's help or advice. But he sees Krishna is giving me this opportunity to serve him. And he would be very gladly giving advice to Lord Krishna. So, Lord Udd Uddhava was a very close, personal, confidential associate of Lord Krishna. When Vidura, on his uh, pilgrimage, when he met, uh, Udd uh, when he met Uddhava, in Haridwar on the banks of the Ganga, he asked Uddhava, Oh Uddhava, how are you? How are all the Yadavas? How is Lord Krishna? Is he doing well? By that time, Krishna had already bound up his pastimes. And then when Uddhava heard Vidura's question, he could not help but remember Lord Krishna and he started describing the qualities of Lord Krishna. One of the things which Uddhava told Vidura was, Yen Martya Leela Upayikam Yen Martya Leela Upayikam Swayoga Maya Balam Darshayata Grihitam The Supreme Lord Darshayata to display His Martya Leela Upayikam 
his leela his past times which are martya upayukam which are very similar to that of a common human being martya means uh, all the human beings are considered martya they are they the human beings always undergo the process of repeated birth and death they are not immortal the devatas are called amaras they are called eternal personalities they 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 do not undergo death like us because they have a very long life span ultimately they also have to die but human beings undergo repeated birth and death repeated birth and death very short duration of life therefore this earthly planet is called martya loka therefore martya leela just exactly like an ordinary human being the lord swayoga maya balam darshayata grihitam darshayata for displaying past times which are like just like that of an ordinary human being what did the lord do he accepted grihitam he accepted the form of a two handed form and that form of krishna which he manifested swayoga maya balam it was manifested by his own yoga maya by his own potency it was not a manifestation of mahamaya our bodies are manifestations of mahamaya it is made of earth water fire air space and mind intelligence all these material elements krishna's form is not like that it is swayoga maya balam it is completely spiritual made of sachidananda it is made of pure existence bliss and knowledge and the lord accepted that form and descended into this material world just to act like an ordinary human being yen martya lingam yen martya leela upayikam swayoga maya balam darshayata grihitam and that those past times of krishna which krishna manifested what is the nature of those past times they were vispapanam swasya cha saubagar dehe saubaga riddehe the form of krishna who is the most opulent which is narayana even narayana swasya cha saubagar dehe vismapanam it was bewildering it was enchanting it was captivating even for the most opulent narayana param padam bhushana bhushanangam that form of krishna which is captivating even to narayana we is param padam is the most supreme form as prabhupad mentions in the purport krishna tells in the bhagavad gita that uh, there is nobody equal to him and nobody above him that is krishna's position krishna is a supreme lord and his form param padam it is a most supreme it is even superior to the form of narayana although narayana possesses four hands krishna possesses only two hands but still that form of krishna is superior even to that of narayana and bhushana bhushanangam what is that krishna's form is the most beautiful amongst all the forms of the incarnations and plenary portions and expansions even narayana cannot match the beauty of krishna so uddhava described how even narayana cannot match up to the qualities of krishna so the question comes that what are those four qualities of krishna which are, which even narayana does not possess that is described by shila rupa goswami in the bhakti rasamrita sindhu so he says the first quality is sarva adbhuta chamatkar leela kallola varidhi varidhi means ocean kallola means the waves like the waves of the ocean the waves of the ocean nobody can count krishna exhibits sarva adbhuta completely astonishing everyone including narayana becomes astonished sarva adbhuta chamatkara miraculous wonderful feats krishna performs the like innumerable pastimes like the waves of the ocean you cannot count krishna manifests uncountable pastimes which are which are captivating even to lord narayana which are miraculous and cannot be performed anyone else not even narayana can perform the kind of pastimes which krishna performed what are those pastimes if you look at the childhood of krishna he killed various uh, asuras even as a 6 month old child on the lap of his mother he killed putana 
when he was one year old he was he was just about uh, able to turn to his side that's all not even one year old i think he was about 8 months old or something like that he he would just turn to his side he was not even able to crawl at that time he killed shakatasura and when he was about a year old and he was just started crawling he killed uh, uh, the the uh, uh, what was that uh, uh, trinavarta he killed trinavarta who came in the form of a whirlwind so you can see how krishna even as a small child he he killed all kinds of asuras very easily and then when he grew up a little more he killed bakasura agasura all big big demons krishna killed very easily okay killing asuras the all the lords various incarnations also do that's not all that adbhuta what is even more adbhuta is all krishna displayed his power in killing all those all those uh, uh, asuras and all different incarnations like lord ramachandra narsimhadev etc also killed various powerful demons like prabhupada is mentioning in the purport narsimhadev killed hiranyakashipu who was so powerful that simply by his unfavorable raising his eyebrows he would look like this and the whole devata uh, this one everybody in the devaloka would start trembling oh hiranyakashipu has got upset now something big is going to happen so even he was torn apart simply by the nails of narsingadev narsingadev did not need any big astra or anything to kill hiranyakashipu just his nails was enough so narsingadev displayed extraordinary power so power is displayed by the different uh, incarnations of the lord but krishna's speciality is he mixed those powerful displays with his sweetness that same krishna who as a Six month old baby killed Putana effortlessly. He was bound to the wooden mortar by his mother. How is it possible? He is such a great transcendental personality. Even big big rishis are running after Krishna to capture the form of Krishna within their heart. And with all their tapasya and renunciation and all that, they are not able to capture him. And here Ashoda Maya, a simple cowherd woman, is tying Krishna with a rope. And then when Krishna was a small kid, his father nanda maharaj would ask yashoda mai oh dear mother of krishna your son can do some work or not or he will keep playing all day and then yashoda mai will reply to would reply to nanda maharaj what do you want him to do you my son is very capable he is very powerful person you tell me what work you want him to do and then nanda maharaj will tell okay tell him to bring my slippers let us see and then yashoda mai would say oh krishna your father wants his slippers please take and give and krishna small like a small baby he would walk he would take the slipper of nanda maharaj keep it on his head and bring it to nanda maharaj and give it to him and nanda maharaj would ah very good a wonderful child and ishoda your your son is very intelligent and very capable <laughs> see such sweet past times krishna exhibited and that was mixed with his opulent display of his power also so that 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 sweetness that madhura of uh, krishna's past times mixed with his vidya it is incredible which is not displayed even by lord narayana lord ramachandra also displayed childhood past times but all his childhood past times were were very uh, like that of an ordinary child he did not do anything extraordinary during his childhood but lord krishna's past times are sarva adbhuta chamatkara leela kallola varidi like this krishna displayed wonderful sweet past times of his childhood mixed with his uh, with the opulence of his power all through his childhood this is the first opulence of krishna which nobody not even narayana can display the second opulence of krishna the second quality of krishna it is said that atulya madura prema mandita priya mandala that krishna displays krishna's uh, the the devotees of krishna in vraja they display such love for krishna which no other devotees not even narayana's devotees display and out of all the devotees of krishna the gopis atulya madura prema mandita they are decorated they are mandita they are decorated with atulya madura prema they are decorated with 
unequaled, unrivaled Madhurya Prema, the, the, the Shingara Rasa they display. Of course, Shingara Rasa is displayed by Narayana also. But the Narayana displayed Madhurya Rasa with only Lakshmi Devi. He had only one consort. Whereas Krishna has millions of gopis. Priya Mandala, he has got a, got a complete uh, uh, assembly of gopis who are exchanging unrivaled Madhurya, Madhurya Prema with Krishna. The love which the gopis display for Krishna is not displayed even by Lakshmi Devi. Even Lakshmi Devi wants to, wants to experience that kind of Madhurya Prema which the gopis experience with Krishna. But even she cannot, despite performing austerities for millions of years, even she is not able to enter into those pastimes of the gopis. So even Lakshmi Devi aspires to enter into those pastimes of Krishna. So you can see how Krishna's display of Madhurya Rasa is something which is very, very unique. Even Narayana cannot display that. And the third thing, the third thing is that Trijagan Manasa Karshi Murali Kalakujitaha Krishna is playing on his flute. The melodious playing of Krishna's flute Murali Kalakujitaha that melodious playing of the flute by Krishna is Trijagan Manasa Karshi. It attracts the mind of all the living entities in all the three worlds. In fact, when Krishna plays his flute, the devatas are going in their planes, they are flying in their planes with their consorts and all the women folk of the Devaloka, when they hear Krishna's flute, they become completely bewildered and their hearts become filled with amorous love for Krishna and they become ashamed of themselves. And they completely lose sight of themselves. Not only this, even Brahma and Lord Shiva, when they hear the playing of the flute of Krishna, they are unable to understand the intricate notes that he is playing and they just bow down their head and deeply in, uh, try to meditate upon the notes which Krishna is playing and try to understand the way he has composed them and what it conveys. Even they are bewildered by the notes played by Krishna. Krishna's playing of the flute is so sweet and it is so enchanting. This is the third quality of Krishna. And the fourth quality of Krishna, the fourth quality of Krishna is his unequaled beauty. Shri, his, his beauty, uh, uh, his uh, Aishwarya, which, uh, which vispapanam characharam, his uh, unrivaled beauty is such that it bewilders even chara and achara, even the living entities who are moving as well as the non-moving living entities also become bewildered by Krishna. Krishna's beauty. So Krishna's beauty is such that whenever the birds and uh, the gopis and all the other living entities of Vraja, when they would, uh, the peacocks and all these living entities, when they would look at Krishna's beauty, they would become stunned in ecstasy. And not only all these, even the trees and the waters of the rivers, they would also become stunned and they would attain opposite natures. They would start shivering and trembling and the flowing river would stop flowing. So this is the uh, unrivaled beauty of uh, Krishna. So these four transcendental qualities of Krishna excel Narayana in every way. Even Narayana cannot match that. And therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, that uh, Siddhanta Tastu Abhede Api Shri Sha Krishna Swarupa Yoho Although there is no difference between Krishna and Shri Sha Shri Sha means Narayana Shri means Lakshmi and Isha means Master So Master of Lakshmi is Narayana Although there is fundamentally by when we look at it from the perspective of Siddhanta Siddhanta Tastu Abhede There is by, according to Siddhanta there is no difference between Narayana and Krishna because Narayana is the is the expansion of Krishna and there is no difference between Krishna and his expansions. They are all Vishnu Tattva. So, Siddhanta Tattva Abhede Api. By Siddhanta, if you see, there is no difference. Shri Sha Krishna Swarupa Yoho. There is no difference between Krishna and Narayana. But then, Rasenot Krishyate Krishna Rupam. When we look at uh, from the perspective of Rasa, Esha Rasa Stitihi, the fact of 
uh, the matter when we when we look at the rasa displayed the mellows the the pastimes displayed by the two personalities narayana and krishna rasena utkrishyate krishna krishna roopam krishna's form excels even narayana when it comes to the rasa which is exhibited by krishna with his devotees especially the madhurya rasa which cannot be displayed even by narayana therefore we have to understand when we look at it from all these perspectives that krishna is the supreme personality of god narayana is an expansion of krishna both of them are equally the supreme personality of god but still krishna is the fountain head from whom even narayana is coming and therefore krishna is actually the ultimate absolute truth there is nobody equal to krishna not even narayana and there is nobody above him and therefore the shrimad bhagavatam is saying ete cham sakala hapum saha all everybody else is a, is an expansion or a plenary portion or a portion of a plenary portion of krishna but krishna stu swayam bhagavan he he is himself the supreme personality of godhead completely independent and he depends only upon himself when he descends he is not an avatar like the rest of the people who are incarnated from narayana whereas krishna he is incarnating himself and therefore krishna's position is unequaled unrivaled and there is nobody equal to or superior to krishna so this is how the shrimad bhagavatam is revealing the the uh, the most confidential truth which is hidden in the in the in the words of the scriptures in the vedas so if we study the vedas the upanishads and all that it is very very difficult to come to the conclusion about who is the supreme personality of god and although it is described it is described in a confidential manner but then the bhagavatam directly describes it reveals it opens up who is the supreme person and chaitanya mahaprabhu actually brought out this eternal truth about the real position of krishna until chaitanya mahaprabhu nobody had revealed how the madhurya rasa of krishna is the most super excellent uh, it 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 demonstrate the super excellent form of krishna even above that of narayana it was chaitanya mahaprabhu who revealed this so this is a very special thing which is available to us through uh, uh, the mercy of shaila prabhupad and uh, we have to uh, we have got the great fortune of uh, becoming the devotees directly of the supreme personality of god at narayan uh, uh, krishna and uh, by simply by chanting the hare krishna maha mantra and reading shrimad bhagavatam every day we can we can reawaken that forgotten love for krishna and go back to goloka vrindavan to engage in past times with the supreme personality of god at which is krishna who beyond even narayana and the vaikuntha loka so i'll stop here if anybody has any question or comment we can discuss yes please so krishna is uh, krishna appears once in so many uh, mahayugas once in 71 something mahayugas he appears once in 1000 mahayugas once in one day of brahma one day of brahma so within that short span of time he keeps his identity very confidential as you mentioned yes um why is that or why does he want to maintain that confidentiality also like there's so much confusion as you mentioned this is the first part of the question second part is um if so many uh, other uh, gods like lakshmi devi or even the other demigod sages they are doing they have uh, been praying and doing so much austerities and tapasyas mm. to attain that lotus feet what is the hope for us mm. uh, to even though we are under chaitanya mahaprabhu's yes. movement what is the hope for us yes so first of all <clears throat> your uh, first question was uh, that uh, what was the first question uh, sorry Chris, i forgot krishna appears uh, uh, why did krishna keep his uh, past times confidential why his position confidential actually when krishna appeared 5000 years ago he displayed all his wonderful past times to establish how he is the supreme now people misunderstood 
And therefore, Krishna seeing that people have misunderstood, and Krishna declared in the Bhagavad Gita, Matsabascha Vedika Sanadrishyate, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita very clearly, there is nobody equal to me, there is nobody superior to me. Very clear. And Krishna says, Sambhavami Atma Maya, I come, when I come, I come myself. I don't depend upon anyone else to come. So that means Krishna is Avatari. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, I am the source of everything. Mattaha Sarvam Pravartate, everything is coming emanating from me. So Krishna very clearly established that he is the Avatari and all others are Avataras. So Krishna very clearly declared and also displayed his pastimes, how he lives in the spiritual world, in Goloka Vrindavan. All that Krishna displayed, but people misunderstood. And therefore, to clear that misunderstanding, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself came. But when it comes to the Vedas, the Vedas are very, very careful in dealing with the pastimes about Krishna, because the Krishna's personal pastimes are such that even Brahma becomes bewildered. Even Brahma becomes bewildered when he sees the pastimes of Krishna exactly like that of a small cowherd boy and he starts thinking, I have to test him whether he is the Supreme Lord or not. That is the whole Brahma Vimohan Leela. So if, imagine the most intelligent, the first created, the first Adi, the first uh, Adi Kavi, the first uh, created intelligent personality of this world, even if he is getting bewildered, then what about us? Very easily we will get, we will misunderstand the pastimes of Krishna. Imagine, Krishna's personal declaration itself we misunderstood. We could not understand that he is the Supreme Lord. And therefore, so if we just know about his pastimes, even greater chance of misunderstanding. So Vyasadeva was very, very careful in, 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 uh, in uh, revealing our Krishna's position because he did not want people to offend, become offensive to Krishna by misunderstanding his position. So he was very, very careful to, to reveal it very, very gradually and in a confidential manner. Although it is there, even in the Rig Veda and other places, it is mentioned how Krishna is the Supreme Lord, Gopala Tapani Upanishad. There are so many Upanishads also which declare Krishna to be the Supreme Person. But then it requires a great amount of understanding and knowledge and deep analytical study to be able to come to that conclusion. So Vyasadeva uh, dealt with the topic very respectfully and he wanted to avoid anybody misunderstanding Krishna and coming to wrong conclusions about him and thus offending Krishna. Vyasadeva's whole strategy was gradually elevate the person in consciousness. First, elevate him from the bodily concept, let him surrender to the devatas. After surrendering to the devatas, let him slowly uh, develop himself and surrender to the Brahman. And then slowly he will develop himself further and, and surrender to Paramatma. And then slowly from there, reach up to the point of Vishnu and then slowly, then further elevate himself to surrender into Narayana. And finally, after all that, come to the point of Krishna. So, he wanted to gradually, he wanted to reveal. So, that was Vyasadeva's strategy. So, if somebody rigidly followed the Varnashrama system and followed the Vedas, gradually over millions of lifetimes, he would finally come to that conclusion. That was Vyasadeva's strategy. But in Kali Yuga, what happens is, in Kali Yuga, it is not possible for people to follow the Varnashrama system. Practically, the Varnashrama system has collapsed. Collapsed in the sense it cannot be completely wiped out because the Varnashrama system is established by the Supreme Lord himself, but it has got corrupted and it will continue in, its, in a perverted form. So the original Varnashrama system is not present. Therefore, what is the hope for the people? So therefore, to give the people still an opportunity to know about Krishna and go back to Godhead, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and came and directly revealed about Krishna and gave a process of Bhakti Yoga where directly you engage in the service of devotional service of Lord Krishna. And now when it comes to great personalities like Brahma, Shiva, they all aspiring to, uh, to achieve the lotus feet of Krishna and to become uh, and to and to become one of the residents of Raja. Like Brahma himself in his prayers to Krishna after the Brahma Vimohan Leela, he said, I should take birth as something in Vrindavan so that I can receive the dust from the lotus feet of the Vrajavasis. That was Brahma's desire. Similarly, Lord Shiva also, Uddhava also, all great personalities, they greatly uh, admire the devotion of the Vrajavasis and they feel even if I take birth as a clump of gra grass in, in Vraja so that the Vrajavasis can trample on me, that will be the greatest fortune I can possess. And even after 
doing austerities for millions of years, still they are not able to achieve the devotion that the Vrajavasis have achieved. In fact, Lord Brahma himself uh, says that 60,000 years he meditated with the intention to, 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 to uh, develop love like the Vrajavasis. And he says, even after that, I could not understand the love that the gopis have for Krishna. So, you can imagine, Brahma could not achieve, Lord Shiva could not achieve, even Lakshmi Devi could not achieve. Lanachara Tapo, she, uh, she uh, conducted, uh, she uh, underwent severe austerities. Lananachara Tapaha, she underwent severe austerities. And uh, Vihaya Kama, and she gave up all other desires just to, to, uh, to become to participate in that Ras Leela of Krishna, she underwent severe austerities for millions of years. Still, she could not get that opportunity. So then, wh what hope do we have? The hope we have is Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada has come from that Goloka Vrindavan and he is promising us that if we simply follow his instructions, Prabhupada will take us back there. So, developing that love for Krishna to go back to Vrindavan, to Goloka Vrindavan is possible only if a Vrajavasi takes us back to Godhead. Somehow Brahmaji and Lakshmi Devi did not get that, get that uh, great fortune. They meditated upon their own strength. Whereas our hope is not our own strength. We, what are we in comparison to Brahma and Lakshmi and all that? We are nothing. We are not even a, a, a speck of dust in their lotus feet. But what we have got is, what they did not get is, the lotus feet of a Vrajavasi, Srila Prabhupada. So we have to simply stick to Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada will take us back to God. That is our only hope. And that is the only way you can actually go back to Goloka Vrindavan. So because Lakshmi Devi did not, uh, did not desire to follow in the footsteps of the gopis, she could not get an opportunity to... Uh, to, to go back to, to, to participate in the Ras Leela of Krishna. She wanted to remain in her Lakshmi body and she wanted to uh, engage in that pastime, which was not possible. Whereas the Shrutis, the Vedas personified, they followed in the footsteps of the gopis and they also achieved that status of becoming, uh, of uh, participating in that Madhurya Rasa of Krishna. So, if we have to go back to Goloka Vrindavan, we have to follow in the footsteps of the Vrajavasis and we have to be we have to be, we have to take shelter of the lotus feet of one of the Vrajavasis to be taken back there. And by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's great mercy, Srila Prabhupada is that personality who has come from Goloka Vrindavan, who is, give, who is giving us that shelter and taking us back to Goloka Vrindavan. That is the special qualification, not a qualification, special fortune we have got, which all other personalities have not got. And therefore, we are assured that as long as we stick to Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet, we are assured of going back to Goloka Vrindavan, not even to Vaikuntha. That is how we understand. Is that okay? Anybody else? Yes, please. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhu, in the purport it was mentioned that uh, Mahesha Loka yeah. is part of spiritual world. Yes. So, um, so Mahesha Loka is the Shiva Loka basically. Uh, not only Mahesha Loka, if you see, Prabhupada actually mentions that the godly living beings who are all residents of the planets in the spiritual sky are eternal associates of God in different spiritual planets called Haridhama and Mahesha Dhamma. So, what it means is that the, even the Devatas, all the Devatas also who are, are there within this material world, they also have their counterparts in the spiritual world. So, just like Lord Shiva is there in this material world, the Lord Shiva who is there in the material world eternally is there in the material world only. But the, the, in the spiritual world also, there is one Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, all the devatas are also there. Those are eternal associates of Krishna who play those roles in order to enhance the pastimes of Krishna. Whenever Yeshoda Mai feels, okay, we have to do some ceremony for Krishna, for his welfare. She will invoke some devata and she will start chanting mantras and create some idnyas for his welfare. So, how can they do that in Goloka Vrindavan if there are no such personalities? 
So there are devotees who play those roles also. So that way, even uh, the, the, there will be a transcendental uh, Mahesh Dhamma also there, where Lord Shiva, as a uh, there is a transcendental Lord Shiva who resides there. That is how we understand. And also we have to, another way to understand is that Mahesh Dhamma actually is uh, on the neutral plane. The, the, there is the Devi Dhamma, which is this material universe, which is on one bank of Viraja River. Now the Mahesh Dhamma is situated neither on, on, uh, on, uh, uh, on any of the banks. It is situated in the middle of Viraja River. And so it is neither material nor spiritual. And on the other bank of Viraja is the uh, entire Vaikuntha Lokas and all the spiritual planets. So that way also Mahesh Dhamma is beyond the influence of, the, of, this, uh, of this material world. And that Mahesh Dhamma of course is different from the Kailasa Dhamma where Lord Shiva resides within the material universe. So that's separately manifested which, to which planet all the various uh, uh, asuras who are killed by Krishna, they achieve that Mahesha Dhamma. And uh, the, 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 even, the, even the, those who are impersonalists, they also go to that Mahesha Dhamma. And further they may be promoted even to the, to the Brahman effulgence. That is how we understand. Is that okay? You had some question please. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, in Ramavatar, it is said that uh, the beauty of Rama is considered as uh, enchanted by even the rishis who are the males. Yes. Right? They say, Punsa Mohana Rupaya Punya Shlokaya Mangaram. Mm. Right. Considering that, he, uh, you said one attribute for the Krishna mm. is also a beauty. Yes, mm. I do agree with that. With the, I mean, uh, when it happens to go back to the Ramavatar, Mm. It is also says that he is the one which is, I mean, his beauty is also adorned by many of the people. Not many, everyone, mm. even including the rishis who has given their uh, materialistic uh, things. Yes. And still they have loved his beauty. And True. They, they, and also he has given a boon to them saying that, okay, now in the next uh, avatar you will get an opportunity as a gopis or something like that. You come, I say. Gopis in the Krishna Vata. Yes. So considering this, the beauty, when you mm. say, is it a, a, a matter which, uh, I mean, I don't know, in the sense like, is it from Krishna to Rama, Rama to Krishna, mm. or otherwise from Narayan to all these people? Mm. I mean, when you consider these are the two. Uh, yeah. So when, when, when we look at uh, the transcendental beauty of Lord Rama, all the personalities, all the avatars are display beauty. It is not that uh, only Lord Rama is beautiful, Varahadev is not beautiful, not like that. Even Varahadev, although he is in the form of a boar, even that is very beautiful. So, all the forms, all the incarnations of the Lord display beauty. Now, the extent of that beauty is what has to be considered. So, Lord Rama might have been attractive even to the rishis and sages. But you look at Krishna. Krishna is so enchanting, even Narayana gets bewildered by that. Even Vishnu, Mahavishnu becomes so enchanted by Krishna's beauty that he wants to have darshan of Lord Krishna. And when Krishna was in Dwaraka, Mahavishnu, he wanted to have, he was very eager. I want to see Krishna, I want to see Krishna because Krishna's beauty is unparalleled. And so what he did, but then Krishna was not granting him audience, he was not giving him uh, darshan. So what to do now? So becoming desperate that Mahavishnu, stole the sons of the Brahmanas in Dwaraka so that Krishna would be forced to come and see him. And so that is how when Krishna finally went with Arjuna to, to, to the, to the, to, uh, to the uh, residence of uh, Mahavishnu, Mahavishnu looked at Krishna and he said, I only took away all these uh, sons of the Brahmanas. Why? Because I wanted to uh, have darshan of your lotus face. So Krishna's beauty is Something which is enchanting even to Vishnu. Forget about all the sages. The sages are captivated by the beauty of Lord Rama and Vishnu. Vishnu himself is captivated by the beauty of Krishna. <laughs> so there cannot be any greater thing than this. So definitely Lord Rama is also beautiful. Lord Narayana is also beautiful. Vishnu is also beautiful. But then Krishna's beauty is Asamanurdva Rupa Shri Visma Pita Chara Charaha. The rishis might have got attracted by the beauty of uh, Lord Rama. 
But look at Krishna, Visma Pita Chara Chara, Asaman or Dwa, his Rupa, his beauty is Asaman or Dwa, it is, there is no beauty equal to him or above him. So much so that Visma Pita Chara Chara, even the, even the living entities who are, uh, na, na, forget about rishis, even birds and uh, animals like deer and peacocks, even they become stunned when they look at Krishna's beauty. And forget about living entities. Even the water of Yamuna, when she would, when Krishna would come near Yamuna, she would stop flowing. The trees would start trembling. Can you imagine the beauty of Krishna? The trees would start trembling, seeing the beauty of Krishna. So this kind of beauty, even Lord Rama cannot display. Lord Rama was attractive. Rishis came in front of him and prayed to him and all. They did not become stunned in ecstasy. In, 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 in the case of the in the case of Krishna, the whoever would see Krishna's lotus feet, that's all. They would get stunned. Tears would start flowing from their eyes. Even the calves, they would be drinking the milk from their mother cows. And when they would see Krishna, that's all. They would become stunned and the, the milk would keep flowing from their mouth and they are not able to drink. They are un, with unblinking eyes, they are looking at Krishna. This is the beauty of Krishna. It stuns everyone. Not just attracts. Attracting is one thing. Stunning is another thing. Krishna's beauty is stunning. Even for Narayana. So, that way when you look at that, Rasayana Utkrishyate Krishna. Krishna's Krishna Rupam. Rasayana Utkrishyate. It excels everybody else. So, that is the, that is the real uh, beauty of Krishna. That even Kandarpa Koti Kamani Yavishesha Shobham. Kandarpa, Kamadeva is considered the most beautiful personality within this material manifestation. But even you combine the beauty of a Koti, of a one crore uh, uh, Kamadevas, you combine that beauty, still it cannot match the beauty of Krishna. <laughs> so, actually when we, when we understand like this, we can... We can uh, we can get an inkling of the kind of beauty of Krishna. That's how we, we, you know, the Bhagavatam and other scriptures are talking about the unrivaled asama, asaman or the rupa shri visma pita chara chara. That beauty of Krishna is asaman or dva. Asama, there is no, nothing equal to him. Urdhva, there is nothing above Krishna's beauty. Is that okay? We'll stop here. Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Netai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bol.